So the uh, topic of this conversation was you only get one life, make it count. Tay, you've only got one life. What notes did you take to make it count? Ready? Go. Yeah, he was, I haven't really got into Gary V much. Uh, he's a fireball, man. And you can tell, like, he's very confident. Like you said, like, he's a, uh, he don't have any doubt in what he believe in. And you can see that he believes strongly in uh, the things that he believe in. And uh, the first thing that I put down was uh, be loud about your values and what you believe in, but do it out of uh, gentleness and respect as well. And I think it, when you do that, you almost push people outside their comfort zone and you uh, really address a lot of the topic, topics that a lot of people think, but don't necessarily say uh, so I just, th I think it's awesome how he do what he, uh, does. And, uh, like he said, like a lot of people don't know the things that he do with his nonprofit. And I think it's a great sign of just his humility of, you know, out speaking about some of the changes that he wants to do, but also behind the scene, like he's doing the things that's really near and dear to his heart. And he's not, you know, boasting and bragging about those things. So, uh, I thought that was awesome as well. Uh, the second thing that I put down was, uh, he said, uh, Instagram magnifies the truth. Uh, then he said, people, then I just thought about the quote I've heard Cami said a couple times. She said, uh, people love someone who's real opposed to someone who's always right. And for me, I think you have to be the same person uh, on off of social media as you portray yourself to be on social media. Uh, so you can't really uh, just post and just, uh, pretend like everything is perfect because you know people don't like to see perfect and perfection because they understand like that's just not how life is so I think you have to show uh, the things that's going on behind the scenes whether it's uh, how you're raising your kids whether it's what you're doing uh, in your day-to-day -day life I think if you show that and you just give people uh, like we've heard on a, a video before like give them a 15 glimpse, glimpse into your life 15 second glimpse into your life and I think as you show that you show people that you are real and you're able to build a business that's continue to give you that time freedom and that fin that financial freedom that you need. So I think you just have to really go uh, be loud about um, the things that you're doing to build your business and show the ways that you're doing it. You know, if you want to reach single moms, if you're a single mom, like show the things that you're doing show you working your business while you're taking care of your kids at the same time. If you're a married couple, show how you're integrating your marriage into your business. I think you have to show uh, the things that you're doing uh, within your household, within just the way that you live your life, show those same things within your business. Uh, the three thing, the third thing that I wrote down that him and Ed kind of uh, references, uh, they said, have patience, but put in the work. Uh, put in the work, not knowing that, you know, it, it may not pay out right now, but if you just continue to put in the work, then you have to understand, like, you're going to reap the benefits of it. And that just goes into the uh, fourth thing that I put down. He said, don't, under, don't underestimate the power of momentum. Then he said, the things that you say no to can be a trigger for your momentum. So I think for us right now, uh, we can't afford to get distracted by the things that have nothing to do with our goals. We can't afford to get distracted by the things that have nothing to do with the visions and the dreams that we set out in the beginning of the year. So you have to uh, be laser focused on the things that you want and you have to do those things consistently. And you have to do those things constantly, day in and day out. And you have to continue to show up uh, for yourself, continue to show up for your family, your business, and for your team as well. So uh, just continue to uh, put the, uh, the uh, continue to do the main things. Keep your priorities in line. And just going back to the things that we've heard over the past weeks, the six list. Make sure you have the six list. Make sure you're doing the things that you need to do for your business every single day, whether you feel like it or not. And I think if you do that, you're going to see you're going to see the results from that. And just the last thing that I had to share, uh, and it just kind of thought about some uh, kind of remind me of something Joe said uh, on Tuesday when he gave the, uh, the example of just uh, when you fly in the airline and the first thing they tell you, you put on your mask before you try to help somebody else. He said, you can't give if you're not in a place of giving. So you have to make sure everything is right within you before you can go out and help somebody uh, else. Because if you don't, you're going to continue to feel empty or you're not going to be as authentic, as genuine as you possibly could be. Because you know, deep down, that's that little seed of doubt that you have is going to trigger over and spill into that person. So you just have to be confident in who you are and you have to continue to make sure you're doing the things necessary for your uh, mental health, for your physical health, uh, for your whatever uh, the things that you need. You have to make sure that you're in a great place so that you can give out of that. And uh, the last thing that I want to say to you guys is like Chad always say, make sure you place yourself under the blessing spout. Make sure you're always in a place that you can be a vessel 
to do these things. And I think as you, if you do that, then you can see the results that you want and you always align yourself uh, to be in the flow of your life. So uh, that's what I had, man. It was just awesome to hear from him because I really wasn't never open to just hear him because he can get pretty vocal. But, man, he's a pretty awesome dude. And I just realized he's just very confident in what he believes in. And he believes in it so much so that he's going to be loud about it. And I think he's uh, reaping the benefits of doing that. So he uh, gained the fan in me. Uh, today just by the things that he's doing behind the scene more so opposed to everything he do, he's doing uh, on the front line. It's awesome. Chad, what do you have written down? Because I, I know I know you were sitting there head down writing, writing, writing. Heck yeah, man. I love I love some of the, the things they got on. So just a few that I highlighted here was uh, I love the part when they talked about identity and when Ed talked about the rental car and he got the rental car and he realized that he was like, what, who am I, what am I doing right now? And I think a great question to ask ourselves and define is who are we like, and why are we who we are? What, what is our identity and is our identity based off it being accepted by our parents or how a certain neighbor looks at us or what a friend sees or is our identity based in why we were created and, and at the core at the core of who we are. Um, I always think about the difference, you know, you have uh, character and you have your reputation, right? And reputation is who everyone else thinks you are and character is who, are, who you really are. And until those two line up, you can never have true peace because it's like you're living a double life. You're this person out here. I had this conversation with my teenager recently because he's, he was, I found him saying some things he shouldn't have been saying online and I'm like, okay, you're portraying you're this person online, but when I watch you with your friends and around here, you're, at, you're this person. Which person are you really? You got to decide that so that those line up together. Otherwise, there's never going to be there's never going to be true peace. And I think that's important for us to figure out. So, our identity and and who who we really are. Um, the next thing is when he was talking about the definition of hustling. I like that too because. I think when, when you're listening to that, you realize that when they say hustle, when Ed and Gary say hustle, they're talking about the seven in the morning to 10 o'clock at night, uh, six days a week. And I think we have to understand the, the, tr the reality of what it takes to be a high achiever. And when you, when you want something you've never had or you want something that most have, then you just have to say, you have to realize the truth, which is you have to do what most people aren't doing to have what most people don't have. It's just, it's just that simple. If you wanna go to a high level in your it works business, you have to do what 95% of people are not willing to do, right? That's just, that's just the truth. If you wanna have a hobby, you wanna play around and make $500,000 a month, you can do that easily all day long. But if you wanna make 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, I mean, Joel and Stephanie Dunn didn't get to 100,000 months and months and months in a row without putting in like three, four days work in one day, right? Squeezing a month into a week, right? And so um, high achiever, I just put equals hard work. You have to go the extra mile, have to do what most won't to have what most don't. And I, Gary said, he's just a natural purebred, you know, and, and he's, he's embraced who he is and, and recognize that. And I love when he said, it's never going to go away. And this is, a, I think, a good point too, because, you know, and Joel said this before, it, it's not, it's not about like a lot of people think in their minds, retirement. If I hit this point, I can stop. I can be done. But when you say it's never going to go away, there's, there's this drive, there's this force, there's this, I want to, I want to do more. I want to give more. I want to become more. And that's the heart of an entrepreneur. I think what, the heart of an entrepreneur is that you're never going to retire. You're going to keep going and going and going because you can't stop because it's in you. And you just know that you have to create and you have to give and you have to serve and you have to have influence and you have to, uh, you know, do all the things that, that, that we talk about on here all the time. So that was the next one. Oh man, my thing turned off. One second here. Okay, there we go. Um, momentum. Momentum is the key in this industry. Like every single person should be thinking, how can I create momentum? Now the company, sometimes the company creates momentum and then we just all benefit like right now, right? The company came out with a two for 49. Everybody's winning. People that used to have a hard time signing four customers in a month that signed 20 this month already. And it's like the momentum and we're still seeing the momentum happen. And I love Dave Ramsey's definition of momentum because, or the formula, because he says focused intensity over time multiplied by God equals unstoppable momentum. So what's cool is we can create that. Like you have the power. We don't have to have the special 
from the company to create momentum, we can, we can create it with our own special, with our own intent, with our own decision to just push forward. Uh, when he said, say yes, right? And I love this. And I think this is a, a balance because we can't say yes to everything because every yes is a no to other stuff, right? But if you say no to everything and you're saying yes to Netflix, you know, or you're just like, I just like to be home. I'm going to say, I'm going to say no to all this other stuff. And it just reminds me a quick story. So my wife and I moved into a strange area when I was in the army, you know, to North Carolina, didn't know anybody. And so we started going to church and, and we made a decision that they basically said, raise your hand if you're willing to have a small group from your house. And we're like, oh, that means we have to have people over, clean the house. And there's a lot of stuff that comes along with a yes, right? We said, okay, yes. So we had people start coming over. And we had all these couples and it was a young married and engaged couples group, right? So we started making some awesome friends. Everybody was married, but one couple. And they went in and out of, uh, you know, break, breaking up, getting back together, breaking up, getting back together. And we helped them walk through that until finally they decided to get married. Well, the day they got married, I drove out to their wedding and the guy conducting the uh, wedding is a pastor that actually is a president of a Bible college too. And so while I'm there, I'm talking to him and he says, I'm doing this free class called Destiny and Calling. You should show up. And I'm like, hmm, do I want to? Raise my hand. Yes. So I show up. I'm in this Destiny and Calling class, learning all this stuff about myself, right? Because it's, it's Destiny and Calling class. And one day he comes in all excited and he's like, uh, there's a great opportunity in Brazil. There's these 200 villages. They, they want to be evangelized by Christ. He's so excited. At the end, I'm like, man, that was exciting. What would I have to do to go with you? And he said, just volunteer. And I was like, raise my hand again, right? I'll go. And so I went and I ended up going to the him three times. And, and whenever we started this group, going on a missions trip was never my radar. I was like, why would I do Why would I spend all that money to go to another country with some strange people? And it was never on my radar because I said yes. And then I said yes. And then I said yes. Next thing you know, I'm there and I'm in, I'm in Brazil and I'm like seeing the vision. And I'm like, oh, and then this faith was downloaded in me because I saw them create something out of nothing. And I was like, wow, that was, that was huge to be able to do that. And then I come back and a few years later, a uh, Dr. Crowther who owns this college, he's like, Hey, I'm building a uh, advisory panel. Would you volunteer for that? And I'm like, okay, I'll volunteer for that. And so now I get to be on this advisory panel. And then recently he's got his president like inner circle thing. And I'm part of that. So my point here is, is that if you say yes, you never know where that trail is going to end. If you say no, you know exactly where that ends, which is nowhere. No, no means nowhere. Right. And so let me get like one more here. And I, I took way too long on that story. Um, oh, okay. Last, the last point I'll make here, and I love this one. You can give it away and have it all. I love this. I love this so much because a lot of people would say, um, give it all away, right? Sell it all. Because, because you can look in the Bible and you can say, sell it all. And, and then you can, you can feel guilty for not selling it all. You know, you can feel, some people feel guilty. They go buy a Starbucks. They're like, I could have fed two more people in Ethiopia instead of buying this Starbucks, right? So you want to have that balance. I think there's ditches. Like if you're in the mindset that you got to keep it all and be Ebenezer Scrooge, that's a ditch. If you're like, I have to give it all and live in a, in a, a trailer because if I get better than that, then I feel guilty. That's a ditch, right? So what we see here is there's this, there's this middle of the road where you can give it all away and you can have it all. You can live an abundant life. The, the woman took the super expensive oil that I heard could have been like a, a year's salary and dumped it on Jesus' head. And the other girl's like, no, 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 don't do that. It's too expensive. We could sell it. We could give to the poor. We could do all this stuff. And Jesus is like, whoa, let her do it. It's fine. We're like, what? It's fine. So it's fine to have the nice stuff and the nice cars and the nice houses and the nice everything. And it's great to give, but there is, you can do both. You can do both and not have to feel bad about it, okay? And I know Joel will probably speak to that some more here in a little bit, but so I, I love that balance. I was talking to some ladies yesterday. There's a great book called uh, Gospel by J.D. Griar, and in that book, it really holds in tension the six biblical truths when it comes to money. That's a great book. The Legacy Journey by Dave Ramsey is another good one, but I think that's important for some of us to get through because if we think money's bad, if, if we've been taught growing up that money's bad, it makes people evil then what you're subconsciously doing is you're, it's like hot potato if you get in it. You're like, ah, get rid of that, it's bad, it's gonna make me bad, right? And then you're just, you end up servicing debt instead of attracting wealth and building wealth. And we want to be, we wanna create, I know all these guys on here, we want to build wealth and we wanna help people 
build wealth because that is what we can use as a resource and a tool to make the world a better place. So I hope that helps. And Gary, man, you can't come up with too many more hard, harder workers than him, more passionate people than him. He knows who he is and he's just like, he's on it. He's on it. And that's, that's uh, he, I, he gained a fan in me too, because I was just like, man, I want to see more about this, these nonprofits and all this cool stuff he's doing. So good. So I'll just continue on uh, with that exact point that, that Chad said. <clears throat> One of the things that I've always said, and, and I've always spoke from stage about having an abundance mindset <clears throat> and putting everything in proper perspective. And one of the things that was said to me a long time ago was, we don't serve a God of one or the other. <clears throat> we serve a God of both and more and yes and amen. Guys, if you get that portion down into your soul, it will unlock so much for you that you'll be able to just go out and crush it. Uh, the second point that I want to make is Gary V is my spirit animal. Just, I, I've followed Gary V for a very, very, very long time. His books are amazing. If you want to get some amazing content, go out and get his books. Um, Obviously, he's not for the faint of heart, so the majority of you probably had to have your kids' earmuffs on or, or had headphones in so that they didn't learn new words today, but that's okay because his passion for life and the things that he speaks about speaks volumes to what he's able to create and accomplish. I love when he said, people are keyboard warriors, and this coronavirus experience is going to be the biggest exposure of false entrepreneurs in history. The fact that being an entrepreneur has been cool for the last six or seven years and everyone's hashtagging entrepreneur. Well, now we're gonna see which ones were the actual entrepreneurs and the actual business owners because just like with leadership, Leaders aren't made during the easy times. Leaders are the ones that stand up during the crisis. And they're the ones that end up leading. So I, I love that he pointed that out about just being an entrepreneur overall. <clears throat> I love kindness over results. You know, he said there's a balance there where you have to understand that you have to be kind in what you're doing. And sometimes it will affect your results. But that's okay because the heart in which you do it is the manner at which the return will be added back to you. Uh, he said something and, and so did uh, Ed Milet that is absolutely the exact way that I am. So if the two of them are that way and I'm that way, that means that, you know, obviously we're all three of us are brothers. So uh, the, the one thing that they all said that they had in common that I have a common is, is I hate one-on-one -on -one confrontation. And I'm sure the majority of you are like that too, because of the fact that it causes the uncomfortable portion to come out where you have to directly affect somebody's life, which is where Gary was coming at is he loves being able to talk and say things in generalities that are absolutely true because he can have the most impact on people. But it's when he has to actually have that one-on-one -on -one conversation, it breaks his heart because he knows the direct impact that it's going to have on that individual person. But he does it because he knows it's what's best for them. To, <coughs> to sustain, to sustain, who sustain to sustain success say that five times fast you have to have empathy and care for people so the people that you see that are flash in the pan success normally are the i driven people they're not the we driven people you have to be more obsessed with the process than the trophies that come with it Guys, if you get obsessed with your six list, we talk about that all the time. If you get obsessed with the fundamentals, the results will show up. The opposite is true. If the results aren't showing up, you need to go back and find out what you're doing and seeing if that obsession is wrong. 
That's why we tell you what the six lists are, because we know that if you do these specific things, they will create results. You know, you can go out and try a couple other things around to see if it helps. You can try TikTok, you can try YouTube, you can try social media, you can try going out and talking to people in public after quarantine's over. But you have to do the things in order to get the results. Are you really hustling your side hustle? It's not called the side sit around and hope people come to you. It's called side hustle for a reason. So that goes into uh, the conversation of what is your definition of hustle? Look at your definition of hustle and see if it is actually matching up to your results and your goals. If you're not getting your results and your goals in the time frame that you're looking for, your definition of hustle is not up to your definition of your time frame and your goals. Are you willing to do what it takes is what it ultimately comes down to when we're talking about hustle. If your actions match up with, are you willing to do what it takes? You will have the stuff and things. I posted that yesterday. Um, the whole, the whole idea that success and having the things and the stuff that you want requires decisions. There's no way around it. A decision has to be made. And when you make the decision, you will have the success and the results that you want. If you don't, you will always struggle through life because there are decisions that have to be made in order to become successful. There are choices. It is a choice. You have to make the right choices. Are you going to choose to contact and follow up with people like a mad person? If you do, you'll have the results. Just like Tay said, if you're willing to sit down and watch the next Netflix series on end, that's time that you'll never get back. But there is a balance. Make sure that you put in the work so that you can have the rest period. Most people are used to having the rest period without having to put in the work. And that's where you get a culture of apathy and sluggishness that causes people to sit there and become keyboard warriors. Don't underestimate the power of momentum. Love that. Both of you guys touched on it. So I really don't need to dig on it anymore other than the fact that momentum is based on your choices. If you have confidence and know what you're talking about and don't have a hidden agenda, you will help so many people because people will know that you walk your talk. And then I'll just kind of finish on the last thing. You can be selfish and altruistic at the same time. You can have the stuff and things, but don't let the stuff and things run your life. You can have the stuff and things and give away stuff and things at the same time. There's so much good that can be done both selfishly and selflessly. And are you living based on that? Are you living your life based on helping other people so that it can help you? Guys, that is what is so amazing about our business model to begin with, is it's the only type of industry where I can't become more successful until I help you have some form of success. Go out and help somebody become successful today so that it helps you become more successful. Get the book, Go Giver. It will teach you everything you need to know about going out and giving so that you can get in return. Don't do it because that's your motive. Do it because that's what's right. Helping somebody, you know, going and doing stuff for other people gives you a reward that sometimes is way better than anything or stuff that you can buy. Knowing that you've impacted a life, that you are the tagline to somebody's success is so much more rewarding than the stuffs and things that you can get because of it. So guys, thanks for tuning in today. Go out, make a difference in somebody else's life. Go touch one other person's life today that otherwise without you couldn't have had that. And we'll see you guys again here next time. Have a good day, guys.